Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. If we're new to each other, my name is Jamie and today we're turning this 2012 iMac into a M1 2020 Mac Mini Beast. So if you're ready, let's get started. <laughs> Hey guys, so this whole thing here is going to be a little bit of a test. I'm not exactly sure if this 2020 M1 Apple Silicone Mac Mini is going to actually be compatible uh, with the 2012 iMac, but I do have an older video on how to turn uh, your iMac into a second display using your MacBook or MacBook Air. Um, so if you want to check that out, that's up to the right hand. So I'm not going to go into too many details on how to actually do it. Uh, so check out that video if you're curious. Um, it does need to be with these uh, accessory cords that Apple sells only um, anything generic off Amazon won't work so I'll link those down below but again yeah check out that video if you want more insight on how this actually happens um, I'm not sure if it's actually gonna work but if it does uh, that video will um, do so and if it doesn't work this will be a video telling you it doesn't work thanks for playing but if it does work it's a really good solution uh, to turn your old iMac into an M1 beast uh, without having to wait two years or so until uh, the M1 chips or whatever they end up being named actually even make into IMAX. Uh, so this is a really good substitution. If you do not have a 5K IMAX already, it will not work on a 5K IMAX, it's only the older IMAX. Uh, so yeah, let's get this open. I've never actually um, held one, touched one, or uh, even really sure what's inside. I've seen a couple videos now. Uh, no pull tab on this. One second. Now I know why the, some of the other YouTube people use a, a knife. And then you might see here off to the side, I do have um, a magic keyboard. Uh, you will not be able to use uh, your iMac keyboard um, along with it, you need a separate keyboard, um, and if it's going to be a permanent solution, you might as well just get another one. The unboxing experience is pretty similar to what you come to expect from Apple. After just opening the lid, you come to find your product. Uh, you'll find the instruction manual as well as the power cord. There is no additional um, cordage, uh, so there is no USB-C, there's no uh, HDMI plugs, anything like that. You just get the natural power adapter. Um, but inside the manual, I was very pleased to find these very, very large Apple stickers, probably the biggest Apple stickers I have uh, probably have ever seen, um, which is great because they're making things uh, minimal, um, but they really enlarged that, uh, that apple sticker, which was great to see. And then once the Mac Mini was set up and put to the side, it was time to open up the new Magic Keyboard. Uh, so traditionally with my older iMac, it was uh, it's a battery operated Magic Keyboard, which the functionality of the keys are pretty similar. These are a little more shallow, um, but it's really nice not to have to replace uh, the uh, batteries from time to time. Uh, it comes with this lightning uh, to USB-A uh, cable, so you could charge it and use the Magic Keyboard at the same time, which is uh, that's a phenomenon that we don't get with a Magic Mouse, so that's pretty cool. Uh, aside from that, there was just the natural 
uh, instruction manuals and it was kind of thick. Um, the instruction manuals were actually more so than the Mac Mini. Uh, go figure, right? So normally the setup for a Mac Mini is pretty straightforward. All you would have to do is just attach your power adapter to the Mac Mini and then to the wall, and then either a Thunderbolt, USB-C, or HDMI, depending on your cord of choice and depending on the monitor. Uh, from there, it's really plug and play. You just press the power button and go from there, but unfortunately, I ran into a couple of roadblocks. All right, guys, so big bummer. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like you're able to pair the M1 Mac Mini uh, with an older version iMac. Uh, it really sucks. Um, it's really unfortunate. I really thought I would be able to pair the two. Um, I tried a lot of things. It did not work. Um, I tried downloading a older version of Mac OS. So I went all the way back to Mac OS High Sierra. Um, I downloaded a bootable disk onto this uh, thumb drive here that has uh, two sides. So it has a USB-A portion as well as a USB-C. Um, I had to use my MacBook. Uh, which only has a USB-C, and then this older guy, he only has a USB-A, so it was quite uh, quite interesting. Um, tried several things, didn't work. Um, so unfortunately, it does not look like we're able to connect a Mac Mini uh, with an iMac, which is really unfortunate, because it would have been a really good replacement if you have an older iMac, um, until we wait until the new ones, because that would be the ideal time to upgrade. Like this guy behind me doesn't do uh, very much, except uh, surf the web. Um, I mean, I connect my uh, MacBook to it, uh, which is great because uh, I get the bigger screen real estate. Um, but I really wanted to also get the power and performance of the M1 MacBook. Um, I don't know if the M1 MacBook will work. Um, that might be my uh, test number two. I'll keep you guys updated if you're following along with this video. Um, but I guess we should kind of consider a little bit of an unboxing. Um, I'm going to turn around and grab the Mac Mini, maybe kind of go over some of the ports at the back. Um, I was able to actually set it up on an older uh, screen, um, older monitor. Um, I mean, it's really fast. I even connected it to my TV uh, through HDMI. Um, obviously, it's really great, it's really fast. Um, but just really not what I wanted. I know I could just get another screen, but it kind of takes away from the appeal of an iMac uh, without getting that uh, Pro Display HDR, which is just crazy. Um, and it's definitely out of my uh, my budget, and it's, I'm sure it's out of a lot of people's budgets. Uh, so this was much more budget friendly. Uh, but anyway, I'm just gonna grab the Mac Mini behind me and just kind of go over some of the ports in the back, which uh, for some of the reasons why I went with the Mac Mini um, as this little setup and not just a traditional MacBook um, or MacBook Pro like I, I currently do with my MacBooks. Uh, so yeah, let me grab it and we'll walk you through some of the ports. Uh, so right here behind us, uh, we do have the, the power plug, which is cool uh, and really good. So typically with uh, when you connect a MacBook, um, so if we were to connect to one of the M1 MacBooks, those guys only have two USB-C um, plugs. One is going to be for power if you need to plug in for power, and the other one is going to need to plug into the, uh, the computer. So that right there just eliminates all your ports. Um, all together because they only have two. Um, I'm guessing that only two USB-C situation is a bit of a limitation of the M1 chip or perhaps uh, because of the ability of only having one fan or no fan in the, the air. This guy, it was really quiet uh, during the setup, but it does have obviously a little bigger of a fan than the MacBooks do. Uh, so that is the, uh, the power adapter. Um, Ethernet plug if you wanted to connect it to direct Ethernet. Uh, I skipped over the power. Um, that's right there. Uh, the two USB-C uh, to Thunderbolt. Um, unfortunately, did not work at Thunderbolt. Uh, HDMI port, so you connect it to your TV or an external monitor. Uh, two traditional USB-A's as well as a headphone jack, and then right there is a the little fan. Um, there is a speaker in here. Um, you can hear the little startup chime when you do press the on button, so it's cool and it does have a uh, sound. It's very low, so if you do have an external setup with this guy, um, definitely recommend that you get external speakers, uh, which I do behind me anyway. So, yeah. 
Guys, a uh, bit of a bummer there, but there's so much to look forward to in the future here with the Mac. Uh, minis, M1 chips, all of it all together. This guy um, is going to be fun. I'm just fortunately not going to be able to keep it in this little studio here setup that I have. It's going to have to make its way to another room. Um, I'll still use it, uh, but totally bummed. Uh, anyway, so again, consider this a little bit of an unboxing. Uh, thank you for watching all the way through. I know it was a little bit of a letdown, but hopefully you'll still consider uh, subscribing, liking the video. Um, check out my other video on how to set up a traditional Intel MacBook to your older iMac, because that definitely works. Use it all the time. Um, but unfortunately, the M1 chip, uh, it's just not ready uh, yet. So uh, until next day, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you.